For all my fellow basement dwellers out there, we know the winter months can be brutal growing indoors. We know we have a problem when temps drop and your plants are freezing. Isn't it beautiful, Audrey? She'll see it later, honey. Her eyes are frozen. So, we got this Thermal Forge T3 in by AC Infinity. Pretty excited about this one. It's our first one. I think it's time we put this thing to the test, bust it out of the box. So we'll be right back in a minute. All right, guys, we got the Thermal Forge out of the box. And on first impressions, I gotta say, I thought it'd be a little bit bigger, but sometimes bigger is not always better, right? We took some time to do a few measurements of this thing just to kind of show you guys how big or small it is. We're talking a width of 11 inches here, height of 12 and a quarter inch, and depth of six inches. So you can pretty much put this thing anywhere and it's, it's very compact. And I gotta say, aesthetically, it, it just, when you power it up and you turn it on, you kind of feel like you got yourself a new little lab, laboratory equipment. It, it, it makes you feel like you have something more than just a heater. So, I, I mean, I know perceived value is all that, but this is, it's pretty cool. When you look at the front, the panel that they're showing us right here is their press button control panel, which gives the Thermal Forge independent control. So if you do just need a heater and you want to run it completely on its own, no problem. You got the push button control right here. You can cycle through all the settings and it's going to be able to allow you to run this however you need, completely on its own. What most people though like is the UIS control, which AC Infinity built in all the UIS functionality into this thing. So if you do want to tie it into the controller 69, it's ready right out of the box. Another thing I noticed too is the specs of this heater is uh, 530 watts max power draw. That may sound like a lot of power consumption at max 10 speed. But if you think about it, take a look at space heaters that are sold in the big box stores or on the market. And you'll see that a lot of them are 750 watts, as high as 1500 watts of power. So when we start to get into the actual testing of this thing, I'm curious to see how powerful it is. Because if it can match even a 750 watt or a thousand watt heater, as far as heat output goes, we're talking some substantial energy savings being used here like this is this could be a little game changer for all of our grow tent operators it is good to run this thing what ac infinity says is 200 and 200 cubic feet so what is 200 cubic feet it's pretty much going to be able to run a four by eight grow tent by my calculations so this little guy can handle a pretty large space all on its own when we look at the tube that they included, the heater tube, this is pretty neat. It comes kind of tucked down. And as you see, if you don't need the extender, the already attached tube looks like it's about two to two and a half feet. And if you look up close, they included a tube guard attached not only on the first tube, fold this right back down, Click it back in but on the extender you can add this right onto the existing tube and you got six and a half feet of run the tube itself when we were looking at it we actually had a customer come in here and look at it they thought it would be a bigger heater too and a larger tube and we were kind of playing around in the shop and we found another product that if you don't like the size of the tube going into let's say like a six or an eight inch cutout because it's flopping all over the place or even through a power accessory port or you don't have an additional one secret jardine makes this little cable flange where you can actually it includes a cutting kit where you can actually add a port to any grow tent by just simply cutting it out using their cutting kit and twisting on and we found that this this actual coupler works perfect for the heater vent 
or the heater tube to go right through. So just passing that little tidbit of knowledge onto what we see. The tube is a little bit heavier duty construction, probably because it's designed to handle higher heat applications. So as far as the quality of the tube goes, I feel pretty comfortable about what I'm seeing and it holding together quite well. We'll put this back over here. And let's turn this around and let's kind of see what we see on the back side of the heater. Now on the back side, I already connected their lovely sensor probe, Swiss made water resistant into the back port here. The ports do include grommeted covers that are included when you're not using these plugs you can put the plugs back in, if not in use, to make sure that no water or debris goes into both the UIS or the sensor probe plug. Off the back here, I love this part. They included a thin filter. All you have to do is peel this off, rinse it off. If you have pets, cats, dogs, or a lovely lady with long hair in your life, this is a game changer. You can rinse this off, just make sure it's dry, put it right back in there. Now you got no hair debris pulling into the motor itself. I'm sure a lot of people can appreciate that, including myself. The, the wires that they included, the UIS cables, they made sure to include the double grommet seals also. So whether you're using the sensor and the UIS cable, or you need to use the plugs, they did make sure that the grommets were added Due to other hardware earlier release that didn't have those, they saw water getting in and causing failure within the devices because of a ground issue. So they fixed that. Another thing that they did actually, if you look on the underside, when you're not using it, you can wrap the power cord right around this and store it away so there's no additional cord length coming out. So if you just have a short cord run, you can wrap this thing off the bottom and hide the cord. So I guess they covered a lot of details here, but most importantly, guys, we got to talk about the 10 speed settings. What is it? They say true heat settings. So what John and I decided to do is we wanted to make a little time lapse where we bust the tube out. We're going to go like this. We're going to take a AC infinity. hygrometer we're gonna jam this little baby up the tube let's just see what happens what do you think we're gonna go through each speed setting enjoy the show and I'll be right back <sighs> kind of hot in these rhinos We're back. So what did you guys think of this thing maxing out at 142 degrees? This thing goes to 10. So after that little time-lapse snippet and our readings that we took off of this true 10 speed thermal forage heater, I gotta say, I love it. I mean, to have that kind of control and range with heat output is, is definitely something I, I have not seen available. And when we look at the fact that this is a UIS device and we look at, you know, AC Infinity's Controller 69, and then we look at AC Infinity's CloudForge humidifier, this is kind of where we want to talk about VPD for a minute and why, why do people want it? Why do they want to know about it? What is it? I'm going to, I'm going to try my best to kind of keep it simple. Um, get everybody to kind of understand what is VPD and why is it needed. And let's just break it down. VPD is vapor pressure deficit, okay? And what is that essentially? We need to think of it like this. Uh, a, a reading of zero VPD 
is essentially like saying there is a maximum amount of water being held in the air, vapor pressure deficit. They measure this in pounds per square inch, or also what's called KPA that you saw on the display, which stands for kilopascal measure. Okay, and we're not gonna get so deep into that, but essentially what we're talking about here is VPD is responsible for a plant's transpiration. And plants transpire continuously throughout their growth phase, right? So basically we kind of have to think of this as a plant breathing or sweating. And how that occurs is we have to think of the process of nature, okay? We have, we have precipitation or watering to the plant's root base. After that evaporation occurs in the root zone, upon evaporation, everything pulls through the plant, through the stem and to the leaf's tissue where transpiration occurs out of the leaves. Okay, so essentially it's a process of flow through the plant. Now, that being said, the vapor pressure deficit reading controls how the plant actually transpires at what rate. And if these ranges are off, your plant isn't as healthy or growing as fast as it would. So for all of our flower growers out there, we have to remember that by dialing in VPD to the optimal ranges based on the plant's phase, because we have vegetative phases, we have early bloom, and then we have mid and late, late bloom. And as we go, we want to be keeping that VPD in a selected range. And what John did, because he's so awesome, is he created this little chart we're going to share with you where you're going to be able to look at the optimal environment conditions based on the plant stages, vegetative through bloom, that you're going to want to kind of work on, if you want to, playing around with VPD, using AC Infinity's controller, humidifier, and heater in conjunction. These two pieces of equipment give you the control tied into the controller itself to keep VPD right where you want it. And if you don't believe me, take a look at the little screenshot we shared of our, our control environment when we were using just the CloudForge humidifier without the ThermoForge. When we tied the ThermoForge in and paired it with the CloudForge, we had optimal control versus these crazy irregularities in VPD. So to keep it simple, VPD assists in optimal plant growth. It's that simple. So I really hope that you guys look into this a little bit more. We've also shared some links in the description of this video that are from some very accredited websites and dive a little bit deeper into it and maybe it's something for you maybe it's not but i think it's awesome that a company has finally started building vpd control into their devices because we've gone a long time without anything like this so that being said we love these products and i hope that you've enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe be sure to like our videos and hit the bell notification for updates on our next drop. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned. Here, John.